Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. Policy, the son of Noga is my name. And I'm back again this week. Uh, it has been some bit of a lull. You'll know that we do face challenges here and there. But we are back again. This time, the broadcast is going to be uh, more regular. Uh, it's going to be more frequent. And it's going to be a wide-ranging number of topics that we're going to be covering. And we are going to bring again different news items as well as debates and some engagements with different people as well as interviews uh right now i decided that we have to talk about some of the stuff that you've been sending through our uh inboxes both on whatsapp and uh on facebook as well as under the comment section on this channel the issue that we want to discuss is the going on uh, that we are seeing in Zimbabwean politics, especially uh, regarding the mainstream opposition party, Triple C, which we also, over the past few months, uh, crumbling, we saw the party going through uh, a self implosion, self inflicted implosion, let me say, uh, beginning with the Sengezo Chabangu crusade where he recalled various members of the political party until uh, the leader of that political party, advocate Nelson Chamisa, decided that it had become a much poisoned chalice and jumped ship. Chamisa announced in a statement that was released publicly that he had nothing to do anymore with Triple C because uh, the party had been hijacked by people that he says were planted by his main competitor, that is ZANU PF's president, Emerson Nangakwa. Well, the validity of those games is yet to be obtained. There has been no proof given forward because everyone who has been involved uh, in destroying Triple C, let me say, or in tearing the party, is known to be a member of either the MTC from his formation or Triple C. And there is very little dividing those because Triple C is itself a mutation of the MTC. And the MTC alliance from which Triple C came is uh, an attempt, it came from an attempt to reconcile the various MTC splinters. You had the MTC 99, you had the MTC Greeno of Professor Welshman Nube. Uh, MTC 99, of course, was being led by uh, Job Sikala. You had the MTC T, which was led by uh, Morgan Swangirai, who is actually the founding MTC president. You had also your PTP, People's Democratic Party, which was being led by Tendai BT. All these people are members of the original MTC. They left the party, or the so-called Big Ten, after having differences with the founding president, that was Morgan Swangirai, accusing him, of course, of being a dictator who didn't uh, brook any tolerance for dissenting voices or diverse views. So what has happened now is that the party has again undergone another split. As we speak right now, the factions are at least three. There is one which is being led by Professor Welshman Nube, at the present moment as the acting president is gonna we are told leave the reins to tendai bt and then Lynette Karen karingikakore and then there's another one which is being led by jenson timber who hasn't said anything let me add but was announced by promise mkwanazi as the interim president of that particular party and then we have of course another splinter which is being led by Sengezo Chabang, because what we are finding now is that Sengezo Chabang is still an unidentified flying object holding sway in uh, some little triple C, uh, whose leader we are not yet uh, certain of who they are, because the initial understanding was that he was working with Professor Weshman Nube and Tendai Biti, but now it turns out that he is not so that is another splinter so around i mean amid all those developments people have been asking us what we think of nelson chamisa's 
uh, blue movement. Of course, Chamisa himself has not publicly spoken about this so-called blue movement, but we are seeing his close confidantes like uh, uh, like Amos Chibaya and Gift Ostalo Siziba going on a crusade around the, along the, uh, around the country wearing blue and hoisting portraits of Advocate Nelson Chamisa and claiming that they are with him and they claim that they are speaking on his behalf because they are lambasting those that uh, have turned their backs on the advocate. And these people are saying that this new movement, although they haven't yet stated the name of the particular party, they seem to be testing the waters and they are saying that this is the new hope for Zimbabwe. And people have been asking what we believe is going to be the case in, uh, uh, among these splinters of now triple C. What, who do we think is going to get more people? Who do we think is going to zoom into oblivion? And this is what we want to talk about today. And I will dissect uh, each splinter. Uh, of all of them, the weakest of them all, although it has gained uh, more publicity because of the recalls of Triple C members, the successful recalls of Triple C members, is the Sengezo Chabangu led Triple C, which is leaderless, which is memberless, except, of course, with those few grumbling individuals who, at the last that we had, were supposed to summon Chabangu to a disciplinary hearing because apparently these people supported Chabangu because they saw a chance for them to then be ushered into positions of power through proportional representation or elections. So many of them did in contest, of course, but they believed or they had an agreement with Chabangu that their names were going to be submitted to the Speaker of Parliament so that they become the party's representatives through proportional representation. And what we are told is that they sat down with Chabangu, wrote some names which were meant to submit to be submitted to the Speaker of Parliament, but Chabangu, as foxy as he is, then altered that list. He submitted a different list, leaving out some of these guys. Uh, and we are told we had there is a video that we posted here of a ma of a, of a lady called Soneni Moyo who was insulting. She was hailing insults. If you missed that, we'll send the link underneath the comments uh, on the comment section underneath this video of this lady insulting people and accusing. Uh, some of the people that are working with Chawang of removing their own names to then submit names of their girlfriends. That's what she said, that there's a lot of promiscuity within Triple C. There's a lot of uh, sex for favors within the particular party. So this particular faction is the weakest of them all because it doesn't have members that held senior positions within Triple C. It doesn't have... Um, what seems it doesn't have a, a stronghold anywhere within the structures of the party. Then, of course, there is the promise Mkwana's led structure where the president hasn't said anything. The so called president, that is Jameson Timber, he hasn't, according to our knowledge, maybe we missed some of the things, but he hasn't said anything after he was appointed as the acting president of that particular party. And the only person who has been vocal from that structure is Promise Mkwanas himself who is supposed to be the spokesperson but he is everything, he's even we are told, running uh, the party's social media platforms which are still named Triple C, but he claims that he is still loyal to advocate Nelson Chamisa while he's still holding fort on Triple C and even appointing leaders saying that these are the people that are now in charge of the party. That one also because you will remember that Promise Mkwanas wasn't well known as a member of Triple C until he was ushered into a position of leadership as a spokesperson of the party by Advocate Nelson Chamisa. And now we are told that there are people within the, the Chamisa splinter, which is yet to be named, who believe that Promise Mkwanazi is, uh, in fact, a compromised individual. He disputes that. But there are many that we have spoken to who believe that he is compromised and is one of the people that Advocate Nelson Chamisa realized at a later stage that 
they are not people to surround himself with we are not uh, certain about that so we are, not, we are neither confirming nor denying that but we are just passing to you what we have been told some of you have seen journalist our brother Hopel Chinono accusing promise of working with the state apparatus he claims that promise has got CIO hangers we are not certain about that as well so we are not going to be part of that but these are the things that we were we are coming across especially on social media and then the other structure the one that is being led currently by Professor Welshman Nube. When you look at the history of the MTC and its split, you will realize that in 2005, Professor Welshman Nube, Gibson Spanda, and others uh, remained with the MTC. When Morgan Swangirai broke or breached the party's constitution, tried to be a party unto himself after he had lost the vote for whether or not the party should participate in the Senate elections. Then Tsongirai decided to break away from the party. Of course, because uh, Tsongirai was the founding president of the party, and because in Zimbabwe there is deep-rooted tribalism, especially in party support, and because in Zimbabwe there is cultism that if somebody launches a party, therefore they become the god of that particular party we then saw the bulk of the support base of the mtc following moken Swangirai, but because he is the one who had diverged from the route that the party was taking he had to be forced to add a t onto his name a t uh, as a suffix to the party's name so it became mtct because it was the splinter. But of course, because people believe that Mokin Swangirai is founding president of the party, must continue to be president until Zimbabwe gets a new leadership led by the MTCT. Then they followed him because many believed that because Mokin Swangirai was from Mashona, and therefore people will only vote somebody, a party that is being led by Shona. That is why we ended up getting uh, more of the supporters following Mokin Swangirai. Then the mistake that Welshman Nube made was with Gibson Spando, of course. They outsourced Professor Atham Tambara because they were also fitting into this uh, tribal phenomenon where a party is said not to be able to gain following if it's being led by somebody from a table. So they outsourced Tim Tambara. And then in 2008 uh, elections, they then followed Simba Makoni, after Mtambara, I tried to make some overtures to beg Morgan Swangirai for certain, of course, uh, reciprocal moves from Swangirai himself, but at the end of the day, that didn't happen, so they end up begging Simba Makoni. So, Welshman Nube and his party ended up getting 10 seats, uh, but fast forward to 2013, these guys failed to get anything. They got only two seats through proportional representation. So, at the end of the day, you realize that his support base is very, very small. And he knows that. That is why he ended up going back to the so-called big tent under the banner of the MTC Alliance. But what they were actually doing is that they were admitting that in terms of support, they cannot match Mokem Tsongirai. And after Tsongirai's demise, they couldn't match Nelson Chamisa in this cultist politics of ours, in this tribal politics of ours. So what is going to happen again is that these guys will fail to get any following come 2028. So this leaves us with advocate Nelson Chamisa in whatever party is going to form. You will know that in Zimbabwe, because of the cultism in our politics, people follow an individual. The individual becomes the party. The individual becomes the main structure. The individual becomes the God. The individual becomes the ideology. The individual becomes the constitution. So people who are saying, I stand with Nelson Chamisa, are not standing with the party that he is going to form. They are standing with him as an individual. Even if he calls this party Nelson Chamisa party, believe you me, these people are going to vote, are going to join the party. They are going to, those who seek a, a quick ride into parliament and council 
are going to follow him, not because they support him, not because they agree with him, but because they agree that due to the cultist nature of our politics, he is the one whose party, whatever the party is going to call it, will get the largest number of votes compared to other uh, MTC mutations or triple C splinters. So this is what is going to happen. Of course, there are some neutrals who vote neither ZANU PF nor triple C. We are going to talk about those, but at the present moment, from among the splinters of triple C, Nelson Chamisa is assured of getting the largest following. He is assured of forming the mainstream opposition party from triple C splinters. You have to get me clearly there. From triple C splinters, Nelson Chamisa will emerge victorious. So this is what is going to happen. Forget about Welshman Mube and others. Forget about Promising Kwanazi and others. Forget especially about Sengezo Chabang because this is the last time you are going to hear about him. After 2028, believe you me, there will be no politician called Sengezo Chabang who is making any waves. And any party that he seeks to join after this will not trust him. His only saving grace might be to join ZANU PF. But you know what ZANU PF does. They use you, they discard you, and nobody else will be happy to touch you after that one. So, Chabangu is finished. I want to tell you this Chabangu is finished. He may have the leeway to do whatever he does going forward. We heard that he's taking Chamisa to court and other stuff. But after this term of office, he is finished. There will be no more politician called Sengezo Chavam who makes any waves after this current term. So we will talk uh, more about other dynamics in our politics, but this is going to happen. But the fear that we have is that because Nelson Chamisa doesn't believe in any ideology, he doesn't believe in any political philosophy, he doesn't believe in constitutionalism, he doesn't believe in... Um, Leadership by consensus is that doesn't believe in collective uh, decision making. The same things that befell him three times previously are going to befall him. So, the more things change, is the more they will remain the same. But I know many people don't care about that. They believe in Nelson Chamisa. They believe uh, in whatever is going to come up with because they believe in the person. So, based on that, your question is answered. Among the triple C splinters, which one do you believe is going to emerge victorious? The answer is, it is the advocate Nelson Chamisa led splinter. We don't know how much of a groundwork is going to make, how much of an appeal, uh, of, let me say, how many votes is going to get in 2028, but the fact of the matter is that among all these formations, all, all these splinters from Triple C, the Nelson Chamisa splinter is going to be the most followed. Thank you.